City living often means fitting all of life's essentials into a small footprint, sometimes at the expense of outdoor space and a connection to nature. Hey, g'day. Who's there? But nature was the key concept when it came to renovating this home. In his day-to-day -day work, renowned landscape architect Sasha Cole strives to make plants integral parts of any space. As a landscape architect, I'm acutely aware of the benefits of green space and um, green space being a real positive towards mental health um, and just well-being in general. And it was these principles that guided the design for his own home, an inner city terrace in Sydney's Redfern. Tell me about the inspiration behind this renovation. So we've lived here for 15 years and it was time, growing family. Every room, I wanted to be seeing greenery, framing it somehow. So it's a really important part of the entire story of the place. So this is a, a totally different space altogether. The lower floor flows into a tropical atrium. Yeah, yeah. Everything's connected in, into itself. It's, uh, you've got these beautiful, beautiful cabbage tree palms. The Liverstoners we brought in, um, you know, pretty mature as you can see, and they bring your eye up to the sky, but they also fit in with what's around as well, all yeah, the other yeah. palms and the neighbours. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be a tough, uh, tough little space to design to? Yeah, it is, because it gets no light, really, no direct light, so the plants we've chosen here are all of those you know, plants that are shade loving, like calicasias, the elephant ears, lilies, things like the ferns down here, native ferns. They're doing really well because it's nice and moist, the yeah. soil, and no direct sun. Yeah. And the, uh, this big wall that's blocking all of that light, you've uh, got this massive and absolutely stunning feature. That was given to us, the Elkhorn, um, yeah. by a mate of ours, a neighbour actually, and uh, it was kind of got too big for his place, so this is the right spot for it. You don't need a lot. I mean, what's this, three and a half metres by four? And from the back of the house and from inside our living room, this is the view that you see. So it's all composed around that. It's, yeah, yeah it's beautiful. The centrepiece of Sasha's design is a green roof that provides insulation to the living space below. That's great. Come on out to the roof park. Wow. This plant-covered roof also creates biodiversity and a tranquil urban garden. So what were some of the challenges that you were faced with? If you get the right team involved uh, from the beginning, it's not like just putting a bit of soil and then chucking some plants in. Don't get me wrong, it's not completely difficult, but you need expert help with this because everything from the structural design, um, you don't want water resting on a roof, it's weight. I would suggest you'd need some good engineering input. A roof like this is done in layers. So we've got a concrete structure um, which spans edge to edge. And then on top of that is waterproofing, two layers, which is flame torched on. And then a bit of drainage cell. And then a little bit of jute matting. And then the soil that sits on top of that. So yeah, the soil selection is really important. The plant selection is important, but making sure it's irrigated is really the key. Mate, you really filled this space out. Yeah, so the idea with the planting is that because this is east-west block, north is up there, gets a lot of shade, so we put the shade-tolerant plants over there and they've gone gangbusters. But the garden is kind of designed in zones, so the bits that get more sun over here are different to these ones over here. This plectranthus is the, the winner in terms of pollinators like the bees and the wasps, this is the stuff that they go for. Mm. Plants, you know, um, hard working plants, I should say, hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gazanias. Yeah. Um, but I, my personal favourite, I love the hardened verdure. I think it's a, just a beautiful yeah. scrambling plant out yeah. here. So you've got all the, yeah, the different form, different colour, different foliage. This, yeah, the knobby headed club rush, one of my favourites. You wouldn't expect to see this on a roof. That's the thing that you see when you're downstairs looking up, you can see this, the isolepus or the club rush. Yeah, yeah. And because all of this area here would have been swamp, um, so I really like that kind of narrative back to the yeah, idea yeah. that we're putting something back that maybe once would have grown here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not always about the flowers. Not at all. <laughs> no, nah, it's the form. Yeah, yeah. You know, beautiful. beautiful. Moves in the wind, yeah. as you say. 
There's no doubt that making plants and green space a priority, even in a small home, has a huge impact on our wellbeing and can have a positive influence on the environment around us. This is a model that can be replicated by anyone and should be. And if we could green our cities, uh, that would be unbelievably beneficial for everybody, community as a whole. Yeah, it's water. Yeah, glass, it's of water. A glass of water.